To the tune of the Glover's Anthem, 11 men of Yeovil roll into battle. Cinderella's of soccer, their giant killing cup exploits have made them famous overnight. In the Wellington, where the host is one of the team, it's all skittles and no beer for Yeovil's southern leaguers. The serious part of their training comes on their sparsely lit ground every evening after work. There, in semi-darkness, they plan the tactics which the whole town hopes will take them through the next round. Though they're not newcomers to the game, they aren't the glamour boys of soccer. But their achievements have brought their town and their team right into the headlines. Famous for its gloves, Yeovil, with its 19,000 inhabitants, is bubbling over with cup fever. Team forecasts and experts' opinions are the study of every supporter, and who isn't in this town. Theirs is a team mostly made up of part-timers, of men like Arthur Hickman, a groundsman by day, a footballer on Saturdays, and teacher Bob Hamilton, master goal-getter, and Les Blizzard, centre-half, an electrician employed by Chairman Albert Smith. And there's Ray Wright, an aircraft fitter, whose hobby is gardening when he isn't on the field. They are the little men whose victory over the biggins has brought nationwide admiration. From the Women's Supporter Club, the team get a complete new kit. Everyone wants to help. The town's grand old man, Stanley Jackson, fairy godfather to Yeovil Soccer, officially receives the gift on the team's behalf. Player manager Alex Stock, gives his side an even chance of beating Sunderland and sums up But no matter what the result, we at Yeovil shall have a rattling good day out.